Thank you again for joining on our side by side, and it's just so good to know that that we have a little community that team, that's kind of travelling together. And this week we're thinking about coming alive or awakening the senses spiritually as well as in every other way, if that's possible, as much as is possible in these days. Well, we're thinking today about the the sense of smell, scent, the capacity that we have to detect different smells. It's pretty, I suppose you could say it's, it's quite apt at the moment with COVID-19 because one of the classic symptoms of COVID-19 has been the loss of smell or a sense of smell as well as a loss of taste. And, you know, whenever, last year, whenever COVID was quite rife in here, I, Joan and I would have kept a few things around the house that had quite a clear and distinct smell. As a kind of an early warning for us, we thought, well, if we, if we wake up someday, go down and can't smell this or this, that's maybe a warning to us that we might have this virus. Well, as it so happened, when the virus came, uh, the sense of smell was still there. But within a few days, the sense of smell absolutely left. And I mean completely. There was uh, It was a very, very clear indication. But when you think about this whole idea of smell, isn't it powerful today to think about how big an industry it is and how how important it is in every aspect of life. From the moment we wake up in the morning, there will be smells, uh, all sorts of smells. Your breakfast, the toast is burnt, the coffee smell. You know, don't they say, wake up and smell the coffee? It's a kind of a phrase. And, and even the smell of coffee is, for many people, just enough. You know, it has a powerful effect. Well, the the $34 billion industry is what scent or perfume is today. So it's pretty important, isn't it? I can remember when I was on a train from Southampton or Bristol to Southampton some years ago. I was traveling to the Isle of Wight to do a little speaking engagement with a, a church. And on the journey there in the in the carriage of the train, there were various people, but I got talking to this woman on the platform. She was a bit confused, didn't know, and came and asked me, was I going to such and such? And I was, and then I sort of tried to steer her. She was from another country. I think she was Jordanian. Anyway, as it turned out, she got on the, the, the train and she was sitting quite close to where I was. So because we'd had a few minutes conversation on the platform, we sort of carried on and it was just normal, pleasant, friendly conversation. And then a little later, she pulled out of her bag a bottle of perfume and she proceeded to spray herself, you know. And wow, the scent of this perfume, I'd never smelled it before. And I don't normally ask people, although I have twice in my life asked people about perfume, this time and, and another time when I was walking behind a, a lady in Belfast and at the at the traffic lights or the pedestrian lights, I, I picked up the courage and I said, would you mind telling me what the perfume is you're wearing? Because I said, I think my wife would love that. And she was, you know, she told me and that became one of the ones. Well, it was the same in this case. And I said, what is that perfume? Of course, you're wanting to know now what the perfume is, aren't you? Yes. Well, it was Tom Ford. And I think it was a Oud or one of those ones. And um, But before we were finished, and there were a few other students were around and Next thing, she had scooted a bit on them and everybody was running around smelling of this perfume, which they would have been smelling all evening. But it's a nice perfume story and I've been purchasing that perfume or various types of it for my wife from time to time. It really is an excellent perfume. But you know, you ask yourself this question, why did God create the sense of smell? I can see it with Luna, our dog, for example, whose sense of smell is between 40 and 100 times stronger than mine which makes me wonder sometimes when there's a smell around how powerful it must be in her wee head. But of course, she can find things, food and, and of course, tracking down various things in, as would have been her natural inclination at, at a time when she wasn't domesticated, I dare say. But God is even willing to use this sense of smell to describe his own response to things. And for example, take our prayers. They are described as a sweet smelling aroma going back to the tabernacle and the temple. The incense is burned as a symbol of the prayers being offered up. And in Genesis 8, let me read you this, our text for today. Verse 20, Then Noah built an altar to the Lord, and took some of every clean animal and some of every clean bird, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. 
And when the Lord smelled the pleasing aroma, the Lord said in his heart, I will never again curse the ground because of man, for the intention of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I ever again strike down every every living creature as I have done. While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night shall not cease. So if you're passing in the car, or if you hear the sound of the farmer in the field sowing his seed, ploughing and labouring, that should remind you and I it has something to do with the aroma of our lives before God, and especially the aroma that happened when Noah was obedient to God, and he offered up to him an expression of worship and praise and thanksgiving. But there's more in the Bible to speak about fragrances and smelling. The Bible talks, as Paul writing to the Corinthians, he talks about spreading the fragrance of the knowledge of Jesus. And in fact, Jesus himself is, is, speaks, it speaks in the scriptures about Jesus actually offering up himself, who gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. That's in Ephesians 5 verse 2. This fragrant offering of himself pleasing because it is perfect and willing, and behind it there is love. Now, thinking of beautiful fragrances associated with love, you think about that. Why is love often associated with the the fragrances of smells? Sometimes because of the seductive nature of those things. But when love is pure, the fragrance is perfect, which is a thought worth thinking about. Just as the gift of scent between two lovers in a pure relationship, is a very fitting symbol of that. So when Jesus offers up his life in this love for us, is that not a marvellous fragrance, a sense of fragrance? And you and I can be, we can be attracted by that fragrance. And then as we share that truth, we are then, I think, as it says here, spreading, spreading the fragrance of the knowledge of Jesus. I think our lives then can become an aroma, sweet and attractive, both to God through obedience, sacrifice, gladness and delight in him. That's a fragrant life, but also fragrant to other people because our lives do leave behind a fragrance in each and every situation. I mean, you've heard of people using it in a metaphorical way. Oh, that person has left, that's left such a bad smell or some talk about a bad taste, but the experience of something. It's like you need to open the window and let it all out. The language, the anger, the bitterness, the gossip, all of those things, they can be like a a very unpleasant aroma that remains behind. So when we ask the question, what scent or fragrance do I want to leave behind today? Well, isn't it challenging? And we should pray about that, that we will both be such lives that are fragrant to God through our obedience like Jesus and also through our living that we will be attractive to those around us. They will be glad. We will refresh them in some ways. We'll be like a refreshment, just a beautiful scent. And after we have gone, that that will remain behind something of the fragrance of the Lord Jesus Christ, the grace of God in our words in our conversation, in our thoughts, in our actions that people will be able to enjoy for many, many a long day. Let's pray for that this morning. Father, we thank you that our lives can be a pleasing fragrance to you. We thank you that our Saviour, the Lord Jesus Christ, in the offering up of his life, offered something that was fragrant And that cruel, shocking death is hard to see something so attractive, but yet it is because of the love that lay behind it and the goodness that came from it. Lord, may it please you to use our lives today so that our words and our actions will leave behind them something beautiful and fragrant. And if perhaps we have been leaving the wrong scent, bitter, angry, resentful, Lord, we know that we can't open the windows as it were. Just by confession, apology, 
uh, it's possible that we can let the breath of something good and fresh blow through you. May that also happen, if possible and if necessary. Amen.